This ACC part one preview edition of the sports gambling podcast brought to you by circus sports. They're back with their circus survivor and circa millions contest, $14 million up for grabs. Get all the details over at circus sports.com. Hey folks, this is bud Foster. You're listening to SGP. Let's let it ride. Go Hokies, man. Everyone to the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean, second the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan. Real money, Kramer. What's happening, Kramer? Dog. A C C. It just means less. Joining uh, us here uh, to talk A C C. Colby Dan, aka the Danta Base. Colby, we're doing these in orders of uh, goodness, and you have A C C. Worst Power Five conference in football. Yeah, without a doubt. Like. Kramer, are you hearing this? Uh, it's hard to. I mean, so on one hand, if you looked at the win total average, for example, six point seven nine. Uh, well, it, that's actually not horrible when you compare it to, like, say, the Pac-12, Big Ten, uh, the Big Ten overall, the Big Twelve. It's not that far off. Now, the reason you say it's horrible is, I think. The reason this the, their they, only, win, they only play eight conference games. Their win totals are inflated compared to say the Big Twelve is the eight conference games and because of that inflation, really they have a whole bunch of teams that are basically like three to four they, teams. they might have three or four teams Worst that spot. might go winless in oh. the Big Twelve. What do you mean? Like Virginia, Georgia Tech, Virginia Tech, and Boston College. I don't know that they would beat anybody in the Big Twelve. Uh, well, we'll find out when wow. Virginia Tech joins the Big Twelve. <laughs> oh, whoa, whoa! What's their path to the Big Twelve, Ryan? I like this angle you're working on here. Well, I think a lot of people look that the ACC more certainty than any of the other Power Five conferences is it, it's going away, right? We're already hearing that enough schools have already. Bound together and can like exit clause or whatever. Is there going to be a world where, let's say, all the teams leave the ACC? Every team. There's still an organization called the ACC. They still have some trademarks. They still got a website. That's when we swoop in and buy the ACC at rock bottom prices and then start our own college football conference. Colby, are you in? Oh, I'm all in. Get I, look, I even I think I know someone at Eliz- Elizabeth City Community College well, who can I, get that going. How does you know? the, what what <laughs> co- other right, than so you know some big wigs. Okay. Other than the clear like tie-ins like this is the conference of the Illuminati. Mm. And so if if there were ever going to be secret societies it, intertwined within a power 5 conference, it would obviously be the ACC. So, how, what causes them to survive? Is it a merger with the Pac-12? There it might just be their TV contract, the fact that they have the grant of rights to like to what 2036? You put that it's but, a long time. But, but we've we we correct me if I'm wrong. We found we have found out that if seven teams I think decide they want to leave no, together. I think, I think it's gotta be eight. eight. It's gotta be a majority. Yeah. And so right now there's not enough teams that would benefit from leaving. Is that the problem? Well, they also the problem is is that they still wouldn't have their grant of rights. You see what I'm saying? Who like they could, that they could break Horrible. the contract, but then they wouldn't they wouldn't be able to air their games on anything uh until until you know they would be able to have to work that out somehow. Oh, this is horrible. But how much longer do we have? Let's talk about the real problem. The real problem is is you know, I feel like the Pac-12 takes a big hit as far as like everyone says, "Oh, when no one goes to Stanford games or UCLA games, uh I think the ACC probably has the worst Whoa. least fan Whoa. turnout." Whoa. Yeah, you got the Miami Hurricanes. Whoa. The, they they well, probably have less fans than UCLA. But Miami if if they get good, they're immediately a team that is selling merchandise nationwide. The U. True, but we've heard this for you 20 down. years. They, they haven't been good in 20 years. Oh, right? I agree, yeah. but in fairness, the national brand recognition of Miami still exists. Okay, but then you look and you say 
let's go further down the ranks here. Uh, Cause I just, I, I think Wallace your, Wade stadium, that place is rocking. They, I, I, they, there's optimism there, but uh, yeah, they're not known for that. Boston college. No one goes Boston college is a Virginia, fucking parking garage. Virginia. No one goes pit plays at that stupid NFL stadium. So Sean, once you know again, what you know what goes team too. What, Sh- yeah. Sean, you know what Virginia, Virginia, the, the in-person experience reminds me of going to see like a low, key, uh, like just a mellow concert at the Hollywood bowl. That's what a UVA yeah, game's yeah, like. Yeah. A lot of people dress charcuterie yeah. boards. They got some. Uh, you can bring wrestling. your own white wine in. See, they're kind of the opposite of the Big Twelve. The Big Twelve, like perp, like that. Perp, that's why Virginia Tech would fit if we want to bring it home. No. Virginia Tech's all college right, so football fan experience the, it, is on par with all the Big Twelve schools. There are some good environments here. You shouldn't like. Don't yes. be mean to Pittsburgh. No, Pittsburgh's don't. not a good environment because oh. it's not on campus, and Fair. most of the time no, they never pack that thing. Okay. Only if like Clemson. a top ten team comes. Clemson, right. NC State. I'll, I'll take it. Clemson, my, NC State, Florida State when they're good and they're not reading books in the stands. Well, the um, other, other thing the Hokies breaking do, news that guy has finished his novel. Yeah, he has. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, it, w- what was he reading? R. L. Stein. That's the reading <laughs> level down there, I believe. <laughs> Wow! Uh, but, wow! Uh, oh, 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 you, oh, smart people in Tallahassee. You, you're mean, worried about some smart people coming at me. The world, Listen, the world seemed to care the, when Ted Bundy took the, out a few of them. The Hokies also bring something to the Big Twelve that they desperately need: uh, intelligence. Right? We're gonna raise up the maybe mm. the, the, the little less mm. toothpaste needed. Maybe help we, out that GPA. Well, where was that intelligence when you signed this TV deal? Uh, I, you know, the, the Hokies have always been <laughs> along for the ride. All I'll, right. I'll tell you the intelligence. Uh, people who got down on our ACC win totals last year, five mm. and one. Oh no! Don't. I was the I had the one loser, um, but uh, Colby and Kramer both went two and zero. Oh. Almost hit on uh, Pitt to win the ACC. That was a sweet future. Didn't quite get to the window on that one, but that was a uh, well, nice sweat there. Did I take the under on the Hokies? Did you take the under on the Hokies? Let me pull up that. Real quick here. I thought we we're. I thought he was going to want us to skip over that. It's funny he wants to go into it. <laughs> no, huh? I like to watch the game tape. I'm mm. always trying to get better. I'm not. Uh, I, no, we all unfortunately had fuck. the over on Virginia Tech. And, but, no, you but know that what? pushed when when Virginia canceled the game. Mm. That's true, because I. You're right. I think yeah. that what though Virginia. Oh, so then. Yeah. So then I didn't lose. I had one and O oh, yeah. because you're right. That pushed. All those win no totals. Action. Yeah. In spite of the fact that I wouldn't have hit it. Uh, all right, so we were undefeated last year. Yeah. The ACC win totals. I Love forgot the about ACC. That. Maybe you're right. We should buy the conference. Yes, let's we, go. I mean, we have a lot of employees <laughs> around the Charlotte area. Uh, I'll be that? honest. Elizabeth City's probably their fan. They, can, they probably have more fans than Virginia. Can we uh, deploy NC NC Nick to start investigating the price of the ACC? Right. Oh, now? we're just gonna call him ACC Nick now because he's gonna be. <laughs> we yeah. could also yeah. broadcast our show on the ACC network. That'd be oh, awesome. Be True. Uh, hey, they got a lot of assets. They got to sell. And, and uh, you know what? We should probably give some respect to Wake Forest because I was impressed with with their their Jello shot turnout in Omaha. Oh yeah, Virginia should, finished. Huh? Last, even Stanford did better in Virginia. Are you kidding uh, me? I don't know how deep you went, but apparently some of the Wake Forest Jello shot taking was guy, you know, rich guy buying shots for. Well, at least I'm it's happening. You know, Virginia, Virginia University's got yeah, a lot of rich guys. Rich yeah. people go to UVA. Come on. Yeah, that's fine. Patty C swimming. All right. Well, let's start. <laughs> let's start with UVA. Well, Ryan, before we do oh. that, of course, uh, shout out to Circa Sports. NFL is right around the corner. We're counting down the days to the NFL kicks off. I mean, just listen to that. We're gonna get you Jack for the NFL season. And what have I told you? You had a chance to win $14 million in guaranteed prizes. That's right. 8 million with circa uh, survivor contest, $6 million guaranteed, regardless of how many people enter again. I, we, we got to stop telling people about this because the more signups, the less, the, uh, the less the overlay is, but it is a uh, awesome annual contest. Kramer and I have been entered past few years, a lot of fun. Obviously you enter in Vegas, play from anywhere. We're going to be out there the last weekend in Las Vegas, come out, Say what's up to us. Sign up for the contest. We'll get you hooked up with the proxy. So uh, again, you can play from anywhere. Uh, so many ways to win. They have quarterly prizes for the Circuit Millions. Uh, they also have a booby prize, hundred thousand dollars for the worst person picking games. ATS. Get all the details and the information over at CircusSports.com. Actually, let me correct something you just said. Sean. Sure. You should be saying at least. Because the guarantee is just like this is the weird game we play, right? With the contests, 
when there's an overlay, we don't want to tell anyone about mm. it. Like I know we want people to listen to the yes. show, but definitely want that sweet, sweet <laughs> EV. So our entry is worth one thousand thirty-seven dollars instead of one thousand. But the second we fill up, then you want as many people as possible. You're right. Every entry over the top, that money gets distributed, and, and it's so. no rake either. A lot of these contests do take a percentage. Just call it out, the Westgate. Yeah, no rake. We, no rake you know, we used to, we used to do that one, and we immediately switched when the rake happened. No need for that. It's like these conferences and their TV deals, just screwing everyone. Mm. All right, and again, uh, you can ten max the uh, millions, and you can five max the survivors. Fifteen k. So. Let's go. So I'm, I feel like we're, we're we ha- like I'm going to keep should. saying this into existence. I mean, we may just take the uh, check from the ad reads and just go put I'm, this to I'm the just, contest. I'm just, lo- I'm just, st- I'm not, I'm being dead serious. Like five what? survivor entries. I'm in. <laughs> Do we pick five different teams week one? <laughs> no, we pick the same one, of course. All right, UVA, aka Virginia, aka the Cavaliers, aka the Wahoos. Three and a half their win total minus one twenty to the over. So excited about plus one hundred to the you can hear under. His, his voice. I don't, it's it's so great that it's affecting my handicap <laughs> during the Big Twelve preview on Oklahoma. I was just wanting to shit so hard on the Clemson assistance just to make sure this one made sense and I was being consistent. Two hundred to one to win the crappy ACC. You guys suck. Five hundred to one to win the national championship. Uh, I mean. Those for are, a basketball those, school who most recently got bounced in the first round of the NCAA tournament, which we picked beautifully, and I got an awesome moment, just just full standing applause as those those lame ass fans <laughs> filed out. Like they were orderly, of course. They were they no spilled food. They were cleaning up after themselves. The le- and le- the, left one tiki torch and, behind. And one tiki torch got left behind, but that's okay. Right, we put that. We we don't we don't blame that for them. They just showed up in Charlottesville. It's completely random. This could be. I mean, I've heard a lot of smart people say this could be the worst team in Power Five football this year. They absolutely got the wrong hire, and it turns out Charlottesville, lame as fuck. No one <laughs> wants to go there. Well, I'll tell you who does want to go there. The uh, the quarterback for Monmouth transferring over Tony Musket got a legit musket for well, his arm. Well, we did the FCS preview uh, when when you guys you know really cared about football and did the FCS in the spring. It was yep. in the spring. Uh, That's why that we was, did. It, that was that uh, was he was good uh, for Monmouth. So I mean, there's that. Uh, so He's if you're like UVA Monmouth, and I you're guess. getting your quarterback from Monmouth, I don't think that's your first choice. <laughs> Would you agree? I mean. And also, like the metaphorical significance of them getting a musket. Like, are you serious right now? A bunch of dudes from Charlottesville with their tiki torches and a musket. <laughs> I guess he'll be a fan favorite. A lot of jerseys. A lot of people gonna buy the musket jersey. I mean, they had something going with Brennan Armstrong, but what uh, ha- those no. days are over. Well, it, no, it was going well, and then much like Elon's rocket, it just com- rapidly uh, <laughs> disassembled when, in an unplanned when Bron- fashion. When Bronco Mendenhall just resigned, yeah. that's what happened. Good coach yeah, versus yeah. whatever. I mean, do we? Is it? Is there any chance? I mean, what's the what's the story? Well, with, this with also real quick. It, I feel like we've mentioned this a number of times, but last year they switched from the air raid to the pro style under Tony Elliott, kind of a disaster. And and I think we've done a good job of highlighting some of these teams that are either switching to the air raid or switching out of the air raid, and how that first year can be a little rocky. So well, even crazier was the year prior. Tony Elliott uh, once. The uh, Clemson's offense was terrible, so they, yeah. for some reason, they could said, just be no, Tony Elliott. It was DJU. It was DJU. Yeah, well, for some <laughs> reason, they're like, let's hire this guy because uh, Clemson's a good program. Still, I don't know. It was a questionable. Virginia hire, lost but, their uh, best defensive player at linebacker, offensive line, pretty questionable. Uh, their best defensive back, Fentrell Sipes, transferred to Florida State. Um, that this this team's not going to be very good, I don't think. I mean, yeah, they brought in Kobe Pace f- from Clemson at running back. Maybe Tony Musket could be solid. I mean, the offensive line was like probably the worst in all of Power Five last year. Yeah, I don't know if it's gotten better. That's though. what I'm saying. I don't think. It, I mean, I guess you can't get any worse. But I mean, so when Tony Elliott hasn't had Deshaun Watson or Trevor Lawrence, his offense hasn't just been mediocre. And he it's was co OC, I believe. He was co. Yeah. So, yeah. but I, I just wanted to dig that up because I wanted to make sure he had no success. 
without a like top of the very top shelf NFL quarterback, which we can all agree Musket is not. Uh, I'm anti- I, I, I love this. Guy. I must get in Caleb Williams neck and neck. Really? First overall, but are there Heisman Heisman odds? There's for gotta be for um, Musket. Which uh, I he can, was first team All Big South. Can I give you a continuation on the last uh, episode, the the part two of the Big Twelve preview? I was trying to get uh, Jalen Daniels listed as a Heisman, mm-hmm. and I I have found out that a lot of these books actually have a hotline where you can email them the bet you want, <laughs> and they'll, they'll they'll get it up there. Mm. So I mean, co- talk about customer service. Great customer service. All right, so Colby, any reason to be excited about UVA? Well, no. it's year two of the defensive coordinator, John Brodzinski. I liked him at Air Force, and I actually thought last year, considering the year prior, so last year was his first year in Charlottesville. The year prior, the defense was pretty bad. He did actually, it's a shame they didn't have any offense because I feel like he did a decent job on defense. No team scored in the 40s ever against them. So, uh, Dude, they, if they don't beat William and Mary, they're not going to win a game. Yeah, William and Mary's good, too. Uh, there's a chance. They they're playing two game. form. Yeah. I mean, uh, is they're playing a. What about that? My there's a couple games. All right, let's win. let's talk yeah. schedule real quick. Because I mean, honestly, and as Colby mentioned, you know, if if you want to talk about one of the places that carries the proverbial torch for the ACC has bad uh, game day environments, you uh, Charlottesville is certainly considering they consider themselves a like a, a sports a sports town. It's, it's really embarrassing. Tennessee to open the year. That's that's it, it, a nice and that's, neutral site. In that's going to be that's yeah. going to be uh, where the Titans play. I assume that that's going to be a bloodbath. Yeah, that's. I think be that really spreads twenty eight. Then, then they I got saw, they got to pick themselves correctly. off the turf and that's play te- JMU. Technically neutral. Well, yeah, that's what you said. Yeah. Where the Titans play. Then when they play JMU, do you know the history on this too? JMU beat. So they we're calling this the Patty Siebel. The, this is the Patty Siebel, and uh, they beat. So JMU went into Charlottesville and beat him, I think, in like 1982, and then they refused to play him ever again. So. JMU's gonna be favorite, right? Yeah, I, dude, I'm, I'm a, I, <laughs> maybe insane. by double digits. No, is this yes. year? What JMU is this year? Had a, was really good last year. Year two in yeah. FBS for JMU, is that correct? Yeah, and they, you know, they would have played in the Sun Belt Championship, but they weren't eligible. Sean, guess how many? Oh, that's so dumb. Guess how many points Virginia is getting week one against Tennessee? Don't look. 21. 28. Wow. <laughs> Told you. JMU, then at Maryland, another road non con. Loss. NC State at home. Loss. At Boston College, which Tough is place to play. Not the best environment. You're getting them early, which is always good, but, but BC's more talented. BC is a high floor program generally. Last year the wheels fell off. Then you have William and Mary, which Colby's gonna tell us as an FCS, they're really good. Yeah. They be, I mean they beat an FBS last year. Uh, if, uh, I mean, if, if by any, seventeen, if anyone is going to show up in Bill Conley's ratings ahead of you, like Virginia is going to have FCS programs ahead of them. This well, year. do you know the head coach of uh, William and Mary is Mike London? Mike mm. London, uh, former. former former Virginia player and coach and that they coach. fired. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say a little revenge a spot little, there. Little oh personal. my god! Yeah, what, where is the win? Have they gotten a win? They're out there by week. It's the William and Mary game. You circle that one. Oh, but with London. I, mean, I, I would favor William and Mary <laughs> by a field goal. Oh man, this yeah. is bad times. At North Carolina, coming off the bye, I'll back say to one ba- and five. Oh wow, which one do they win? It's got to be William and Mary or JMU. No, JMU is good, <laughs> man. <laughs> they beat JMU and shocked the world. Uh, all right, so at North Carolina, at Miami, come off the bye, a back to back, and they have Georgia Tech at home. That one. Whoa, 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 whoa! We got to talk about la- like we can't just breeze over the Miami game. No, that's last be tough. season, go pull up last season. It was all one right. of the most hilarious games of all of college football season last year. We'll get to it. Was was Miami heading into Charlottesville a season ago? Because uh, it, I believe it went to four overtimes. Oh, and wait. and and the final score, considering they went to four or five overtimes, absolutely hilarious. Go further up, go further up, click on that. Um, yep. and I was yes, so look at that. What four overtimes to twelve? In four overtimes. That's Woo! how bad the offense. Do you remember were. that Virginia Tech like six three nine three? Yeah, yeah. overtime. Wake Forest. Wow, game? That, yeah. that's a doozy. So I'm not just gonna just say for sure Miami's gonna win that, but <laughs> uh, <laughs> Miami was what had a pretty wheels fall off situation year two with Cristobal. We'll talk about them on part two, but I mean that that feels like a stretch on a back to back spot. No, I, but no one goes to those okay. games. But, that's, that's uh, but they might like. What if Miami has a little hype this year? 
No one goes to those yeah, games, sure. and uh, <laughs> but what, if they are good people, might start going. They need the it's Dolphins. Like an hour away from the. They campus. need the Dolphins to yeah. be bad as well, uh, which is probably not going to be true. Then they have George, Georgia Tech at home. I think you uh, circle. Uh, you got to circle this one. It's winnable. Yeah, very winnable. I thought you were going to give me another nugget. That's why no. I paused. At Louisville, who uh, you That's see by the number, get, it, breaking news: We're not talking about Louisville in part one. Duke at home, Virginia Tech. Duke, Duke going to be a road favorite. Yeah, Duke's it's a different good. era of football. Yeah, and then you have the hockey game. Now, yeah. Sean, winnable. we should winnable. circle about, circle that one. Right? Winnable, very winnable. It's in Charlottesville. Mm-hmm. Okay. What is what the fuck does that have to do with anything? <laughs> it's in Charlottesville. <laughs> it's going to be a white knuckle game for the Hokies fans. What? I think they, I think they get to three. Where's the three? Virginia Tech, Georgia Tech. William and Mary. Sean, what? Wait, the win total is three or two and a half? Three, three and, and a half. half. Oh, <laughs> under, under is definitely it. This is right. a lock. Just, uh, yeah. Sean is saying some fucking blasphemous shit. Sean. Yeah. So, Colby, you see this list right here? Red dots are when UVA wins, green dots are when they lose. <laughs> uh, 2019. 2019, that piece of shit turncoat. Texas motherfucker <laughs> Justin Fuente tricked the NFL into Paxton Lynch too. If not for that 2019 matchup, the last time the Hokies lost, I was still in fucking college. Wow, 2003. Well, it's a so, new era of Virginia football. Even when the Hokies are down, they still stomp on on the Wahoos. And and can we we, we should laugh about this though? But uh, um, in general. These fucking losers, they they don't defend their turf. There's no home. Uh, there's no home edge. Can we talk about how bad Virginia's got to be? Because they should be rejoicing in the fact that they don't play Florida State, Clemson, or Pitt. Not to mention, you know what? Let's stop. <laughs> like for the a second. three best teams. They canceled the game last year against their rivals. Well, they had a they had, they a, had little, a mass shooting. Right? Yeah, had I understand. Incident. We didn't yeah. replay it. It's just it's just not a win <laughs> or a loss. Now they can say we didn't lose that year. Hmm. Mm. I don't know, man. That's no. a tough. Side. I would say they haven't wins. been in a situation hot? like that. Is that too hot? <laughs> okay. Uh, I mean, three, under by a mile. Under, right? Where's where yeah. are you getting three wins? They they win against Georgia Tech. It's just hilarious because they and honestly have an awesome schedule. Oh, and twelve. And then they get the, they're still going to be winless. In oh, the and ACC, twelve probably. Uh, winless. Next up, Georgia Tech, four and a half, plus one ten to the over, minus one thirty to the under. Two hundred to one to win the conference. Equal to UVA. Five hundred to one for the national championship. So equal conference odds, one extra win to get over the hurdle. We're now what? Is this year <laughs> three transitioning away from the triple option? No, further than that. Four. Georgia Tech's uh, offense uh, hasn't yeah. finished top seventy. In the nation so, in yards per game since 2018, offensive line does uh, re- since they got rid of the triple option. Yeah, feels yeah. related. Offensive uh, line returning four starters, but kind of a hard reset on the skill positions. Although Zach uh, Pyron, eh, slight flashes. What do you what do we make of Zach Colby? I I did enjoy the hail mary where he decided to run out of bounds uh, behind the line of scrimmage and just not give his team a chance. That was fantastic. Um, it's like yeah. the uh, guys who don't shoot, like they don't chuck up the ball because they don't want to affect their uh, completion percentage. I'm making field goal percentage. I'm making the assumption that Haynes King is going to start. Now they okay. have they have a th- they have Zach Gibson also who seems like pretty question mark. I mean, yeah, uh, King was the higher recruit out of all of them. I'm just making that assumption. Off and of they that. lost uh, defense. Of end Keon White to the NFL. This is a defense that led up 189 yards per game on the ground. I think if you want to be optimistic, though, obviously Brent Key, former offensive line coach, came in as an interim head coach and went four and four. So maybe and, and Brent had a little bit of mojo for these uh, for Georgia Tech here. Yeah, I mean, he definitely got the 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 crowd behind him. Yeah. Remember, he, this guy played at Georgia Tech back. You in never the day. hire the interim guy though, unless you're planning on him being a little bit of a patsy, where you can. Like, they just, had no money apparently, yeah. but uh, but I can tell you this: he he he's he's a rah rah guy. You know, he can get the he, the fans were happy that it was him and not the other guy. Uh, what's Jeff Collins? So. 
He does have a little bit of the heartbeat of uh, of, of Yellow Jacket Pride. What the hell's happened to this program? I mean, Paul Johnson's winning Orange Bowls with them. George O'Leary had them uh, winning by, big games. They won a the national championship in the nineties. Wait, Calvin Johnson went there, yeah. right? Yeah. Paul. They used to always have one insanely good receiver. Uh, Paul. Paul Johnson. Uh, his last year was twenty eighteen. So they, to your yeah. point, they've been transitioning away for a while now. Well, uh, yeah, and they've been asked ever since. But the the problem is, man, is like you could probably make the connection of why is Georgia winning these national championships? It's probably because they're also getting players that used to go to Georgia tech. Yeah. Mm. Um, I like that. Angle. Not great recruiting. I like that yeah. angle. The Georgia tech players put them over the top. Funny well, enough, the Georgia tech player went to Alabama last year. But, yeah. And, and, but, but you see my point. It's like, it's like why LSU and Ohio state dominate Patty C's argument. It's like, there's not another school to take the talent. That's a power five. And and that Georgia Tech's been taking enough talent over the years. I mean, they've been a good program for a long time before before you know this five year stretch. Cool. So we have to be careful here, Sean Colby. There's an emotional thing here. Oh, they, they fucked the triple. Got my blinders up. They if the triple option was only still in the Power <laughs> Five, they wouldn't have been able to make that rule. Yeah, I, I, I'm open the very season. Concerned about our country. They open the season against, uh, and I I want to give bring up this. The spread here, but they open the season against Louisville, where they're eight point. Lay it, eight point. Wow, Lay dogs! It, it is not going to say take the points. It is neutral there in the uh, what do you call this place? You got a name for the old uh, the hubcap, the yeah, tire, so something filthy. Yeah, yeah. The tank, the, the Best Buy. I don't know. Uh, Mercedes um, Benz. I don't know. Maybe yeah. it is. But no, it's you the can one in car. Uh, yeah, you can buy a car. Uh, then you got the South Carolina State Bulldogs, a little FCS action. Easy win there, right, Colby? Celebration Bowl. The two they, years ago, they got this. Uh-oh. Yeah, Go, they, I think they got this. That's okay. their first win at Ole Miss. Ole Miss absolutely beat the tar off of them last year. I think it was a shutout. Uh, if I, if I'm not mistaken, uh, it was a lot to a little. I lost my page. Uh, next 42 up, forty-two nothing. Forty-two nothing. There you go. Then back-to-back spot here at Wake Forest. Again, not the most lit home environment. Then you got Bowling Green coming to town. You gotta mm. get that. You gotta <laughs> get that win. They uh, better wait. get that. Last time they hosted a Mac school, I think Northern Illinois beat them. Just referencing my college football notes. Fade Bowling Green number four uh, at Miami before the bye week. Winnable? I think. I think no, no, incorrect. Not winnable. I mean, if Miami plays like they did last year, this could be a winnable game. Miami's not going to be complete ass this year, as much as I would love to to see it. Uh, Bowling Green equal. E- e- all right, so they have they have two easy wins. They pro I think they probably lose to Ole Miss and Louisville. Uh, Wake is a is is a flip. No, no. Wake is got Dave Clawson's all right, fucking then, great. Then, yeah. then keeps there's, a good program. And there's yeah. two it's wins. In my notes. There's two yeah. wins there. Tops. I'll lay I'll lay eleven with Wake in uh, in Atlanta. Two wins or no in in Winston two and Salem. four. Yeah, two and four. Yeah, I think South Carolina State Bowling Green are, are probably two what we think. All yeah. Right. All right. Next out of the bye, we got Boston College, North Carolina at UVA at Clemson, Syracuse, and then oh. There's Georgia. Well, you do get Georgia at home. They did beat North Carolina last year. They did. <laughs> Actually, they, the past two years they've beat North Carolina. How is that even possible? Uh, so maybe we uh, give them Boston that win. College home game. I don't think they win both. They're gonna lose one of those two, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, let's see. Uh, they beat North Carolina last year. They and also the beat year before Pitt and Duke. Uh, I was just looking for some. I, I think best case scenario, you get two wins here. That still gets you only at four. Well, they get Virginia. They're going to beat Virginia. Yeah, Virginia's Virginia's uh, horrible. Did we? We didn't. I kind of had that as a possible Ooh. win. I mean, Virginia. they could hit the over because of Syracuse, Boston College, and North Carolina being in Atlanta. But they they had to win four games, five games to get there. I got them at what? One, what are we talking about? Two, they're they're not getting five wins. Three, four. It's possible if they got Syracuse. Where? So you have three: you Boston College, Syracuse, and UVA. Uh, that's I it. have BC or North Carolina, one of the two. That's back against it. I, there, there's uh, to me, there's five winnable games, M- maybe six. I'm going under. I think I'm going under at the end of the day too, just because I think that they wrong have to, tech. They'd have to win every fifty-fifty game. Bad tech, horrible. It's the it's the tech that has the the worst. They're not. They're less smart, and they play worse football. Yeah, I'll keep it under under four and a half. Let's go. Probably four and eight, I think. All right, let's talk about the better tech. Virginia mm. Tech, five and a half, plus one twenty five to the over. Wow. Minus one fifty to the under. Coach Pry, uh year two of the rebuild. <laughs> What's up? 
Uh, Sean Sean debuting his coach Pry yeah. impression. Ready to go. Let's Start see. moving things around. Get back to football. It's like Dan, it's like Dan Campbell without the no. Uh, he's not the, Dan without Campbell. the wins. He, he's like if Dan Campbell was a senator, and and not as yoked. <laughs> And all about his family and home. Col- Colby, did you congratulate Ryan on Virginia Tech's historic season last year? First time to have a seven-game losing streak since 1951. Th- these new these coaches that aren't named Frank Beamer are just blowing a lot of mm. momentum that Frank Beamer built. Mm. No returning. Ron- no well, re- l- luckily the Conference USA might take you. One hundred to one to win the conference. <laughs> Four hundred to one. Maybe the MAC to win American. the national championship. Obviously, I've I've been very vocal about uh, my thoughts on Coach Pry. A lot of talking and saying the right thing. Mm. A lot of messaging. Kind of reminds me of Joe Judge, honestly. I love. Well, here here's where the here's where you can stay optimistic. I loved the massive investment in uh, like the support stuff around football. So they're they're starting to act like a big boy program. But we should have listened to Coach. Bud Foster, when he told us things might be a little rough. Yeah. Everyone says the cupboard was really dry. All right. How bear, I think is the expression, but bear, a dry bear cupboard. No one (laughs) likes a dry bear cupboard. You want a wet cupboard. You want a nice wet, (laughs) wet cupboard. And uh, if if that's true, what I, I have said to Colby in private, that the first time I'm saying this on the air, a good coach still finds a way to improve There's some get up spots, right? That you can no, get some, it's wins. improvement. It's you don't keep doing the same thing. <laughs> like, I don't care how bad these kids are. You got to You got like, you're not practicing enough. Maybe less social media, maybe less fucking rah, 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 fucking taking pictures with high school coaches. Mm. Like I give a shit about the, your assistants are going out doing food tours in Virginia. Hey, tell me the best food place here. Cause I'm talking to high school. <laughs> How about coach the fucking team? How about hire a guy that didn't come from Urban Meyer to coach the fucking offense? 19, that guy's tight ends coach. You got him calling plays. Reminds me of Brian Steinspring. You know, Burke, Virginia has got great barbecue shots. Oh, delicious. You read it on uh prize Twitter. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. kind of doing a food, just sommelier <laughs> barbecue sommelier. Couldn't coach his way out of an asshole. Uh, c- look, they, they 19.3 points per game. That's just not good. That offense that. was Maybe the Painful. worst. Yes. Uh, I mean, it's almost impressive they won the number of games they won with that offense. Well, they bring in Kyron Jones, quarterback from Baylor. I think he's going to start over Grant Wells. But the question is, is how much better? Grant is Wells he? sucks. <laughs> they also they also brought in Jalen Lane and Allie Jennings, two two wideouts from the uh, the group of five. Jennings was at ODU, who beat Virginia Tech a year ago, and uh, Jalen Lane. That's barely relevant. Jalen Lane was uh, at Middle Tennessee, who would have beat Virginia Tech a year ago, and then uh, they got <sighs> Bashal Tutin uh, from North Carolina A and T, Terrell Furman's guys. So uh, shout out to that. Um, but I think the line of scrimmage is a big, big question mark. The defense actually should be improved. You want to just talk about the 2024 class though, because that's looking good. Oh yeah, that is looking good. They're gonna suck again this year. Well, this it doesn't help sucks. when you have a crazy schedule like this. This fucking sucks. They do play ten power fives and no FCSs and oh, you know, let's a just, little uh, brother. Let's just go on the road and play fucking Marshall on the yeah. road after Rutgers. Yeah, they're, they're gonna... stupid motherfuckers. You got seven and a half million dollars invested in the support team for your program and you can't schedule better. <laughs> they're gonna lose that game, dude. It's a tough spot. <laughs> It's fucking stupid. Jones C. Edwards Stadium. <laughs> Nobody goes into the Joan and gets a dub. I'm, you know what? I'm uh, for my entire adult life, I've dealt with the fucking burden of rooting for a team that will 100% fail at some point. I'm not. I, I think I might be out on them this year. Wow. So, I'm taking a break. Was he talking about the Giants? Ah, I like. A, about, I can't. I'm trying. Colby to, was to, saying to the portal can be wet too, and I like a nice wet portal. <laughs> <laughs> put my fan. Yeah, Ryan already went in the transfer portal for his Giant fandom. Uh, is no, he no, gonna no. Do I, I did not Tech? go to the portal. <laughs> you. I absolutely did not go into the what portal. What did you? Anna- you I announced from? my potential intent oh, okay. to enter the portal. <laughs> I decided. Uh, are to pull you still making donations? I'm no, I haven't actually. I, I, Ooh, so, maybe that's that. 
Sean, yeah, come on. Sean, Howard, that's why they're playing at Marshall. I get the call. You got Ryan Real Money Kramer, and you're not donating. They need that money. Yeah, you know what? Instead of getting a fucking pool, you could have got a five yeah. star back. Yeah, now I see the problem. Now you know what? You know guys what like you give your pool to the five star. You could have got you yeah. could have got Carson Steele. Just build put a build a pool at his house for crack Car- Jay. Carson Steele, yeah, he's not showing up to He'd my house. Up a, a working BT. on my muscles that night, late at night as I'm I'm melting away in the hot tub. Yeah, I, oh the hot tub. Yeah, I'm, okay, I'm you not, lost me. Uh, no, I was like the pool guys. Oh no, yeah, I mean Carson's eyes were uh, were dreamy. Uh yeah, I, I just I I don't know so if we can do the it schedule. Again, oh, about- ODU, which uh, little brother who has won get up spot for ODU? Who's won two of the th- Monarchs, two of the last Monarchs. three against Tech, but man, no. ODU got raided in the portal. I'm going to give this one to the Hokies. Mm, really? Yeah. Okay. Purdue. What's the to spread, town. Colby? Virginia Tech minus. If I had to guess, Virginia Tech minus six. Thirteen and a half. Wow. I'm on ODU. ODU beat them out outright is last there, year. Is there a more difficult Power Five non-conference schedule? Yes. Nice. Not many though. Colorado, Purdue, Utah, oh, yeah. <laughs> Purdue at Rutgers at Marshall. Uh, Those are both losable games. No, I all think, three. I think I honestly think they're going to lose all three. Pitt at Florida State, Wake Forest. I honestly think they're going to lose all three. I got. T- can we get them to two wins, two and five? The, 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 there's so many elements to why this schedule sucks. They they wait until after their bye when their records are already going to be dog shit to have their Thursday night game. Like why is that not mm. early in the season against Purdue? Yeah, now that is winnable. On October 26th against Syracuse. All right, so how many get wins do they have by the bye? I honestly have them at one win. They used to make the bowl game every year. <laughs> every year. 2 and 5. Yeah. Used to make the bowl game every year. But then they got this new athletic director who's got to make fucking changes. 2 and 5. Coming off the bye, they have a Thursday night game against Syracuse. I guess good they don't have to go up to that shithole. At Louisville, at Boston College. Wow, a second back to back. You dumb mother. How do they do NC this? NC State at Virginia. They have six road games. They their Thursday night game is later in the season uh, against the who gives a fuck Syracuse team. Who, by the way, is one of their new rivals. I believe is that mm, correct, Colby? I think so. Yeah, yeah, that's well. What a rivalry! I mean, this is potential. Lot. Syracuse, Virginia Tech. How do they get now? I had them two wins before the bye. How would they get four wins? It's after? like they had someone's kid go. Wait. Oh, look, Syracuse and Virginia Tech both have orange. They can be rivals. Wait, the win total is at four, right? Five and a half. Five and a half. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's let's see. Maybe there's a, a another because it is minus one fifty to go under. So. I mean, maybe if you steal the Rutgers game, I just think they're ahead of you so, right now. So uh, DK, who is playing with fire offering flat numbers in the win total markets has five minus one ten each way. I mean, if you were to upset Rutgers, I could maybe see under. A yeah. Under this is lock potential. Not a good team. Not a good coach. How am I going to watch? I'm going to end up watching the first game and get excited about something. ODU baby money line. What, what, 13 what, and a half. Colby, what am I going to They'll get never exci- see the Monarchs what, coming. All right. Can we get, let's get Bud Foster on the show. <laughs> I need to, we need to have a powwow. If, if I should be emotionally invested this year, that's what I'm going to You ask. chose to get the pool over, look uh, over, over. Now you're going to Joan, Joan C Edwards stadium to, uh, to, you know, to try to you know, collect a paycheck on the road in Huntington, West Virginia. Oh, look, I, look, I, t- 10 times out of 10, I'm going to get a pool over donating to this shit program right now. Oh, wow. Yeah. Vit- so vitriol. You got to wonder how they got in that spot though. Green. Yeah. Just guys like Kramer, little, not being a, a part cheap. of the team. A little yeah. Cheap, a little tight. Yeah. Yeah. Daddy needs a pool. They got Bermuda grass though. How do you, do you like that grass that they use Bermuda grass? Yeah. They, they, uh, replant. I, 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 <laughs> I believe they switched this off season and it made some news in the local circuits. Virginia tech does uh, strangely have like a well-renowned uh, landscape management or whatever type engineering major around basically the, uh, the, the engineering of grass, Boston college five and a half minus one fifteen to the over minus one Oh five to the under. Oh, by the way, Virginia tech, you guys taking under five then at minus yes. one ten. I'm, I'm, I'm not is saying, I'm not four, saying this for stick for this is a lock. At Four five and or feels five, good. At five either, and a half. Either. Okay. Boston College, five and a half, minus one fifteen over, minus one oh five under. One twenty to win the conference. Five hundred to win the national championship. Uh truly one of the worst 
game day environment. I mean, if you want to talk about worst, truly worst game day environments in sport in all of college football, Power Five, Boston College has to be one of them. It's everything you talk about with Miami, without any sort of wheel, man. any sort of give a fuck. The Northeast is about pro sports. They used to care. It, oh, it, they used to care. It just, it's just—it's a recent thing. Yeah, it's a recent thing. Um, <laughs> it's, it's just been these past thirty years. It's pretty recent. Pro, well, they, they haven't Tom really Coughlin. made a good hire. Yeah, post they Tom haven't Coughlin. really. Yeah, so uh, Boston College had lost Zay Flowers, offensive line a concern, dead last in rushing in the nation last year, uh, only sixty three point two yards per game. We, Can't be worse at quarterback. I was about to say we knew uh, that the offensive line, so they had some guys. Go to the NFL. It was actually a good offensive line the year before, and then we w- that we knew that some of the when some of the guys hit the portal that they were in in trouble. But they also brought back like a really good offensive lineman. But then he, before the season ever started, he uh, he got injured. I think two of their guys got out for the they, season. They lost to the Hokies. Last Dude, year. they That's were starting. They were. they were starting walk-ons. Like yeah. they did open tryouts so the for the offensive line. Now I actually think though. That this roster is better than the Hokies because this guy has been recruiting at a decent yeah. level. Oh he brought in Ryan O'Keefe, the receiver from UCF, who f- made a smart move by leaving UCF because Malzahn doesn't throw to his wideouts. So uh, Emmett Moorhead also, I was impressed with him at quarterback. Three out of his four starts as a redshirt freshman, he threw for over 250 yards. He's good. He's going to be good. And then Donovan, um, I'm going to fuck up his last name, but uh, Easy Ruaku. <laughs> Sounded right. Eight and a half sacks last year. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, that's what I'm saying. I I actually think there's a reason for optimism. Now, this is a make or break year for Halfley, but he's been recruiting. He's on the hot seat. He's been recruiting the best Boston College has recruited in like 20 years. Some winnable games on this schedule, though. Last um, year, if if not counting their game against the uh, FCS opponent, the main Black Bears, they won their two games by a combined two points. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Right on the edge there. Uh, I can tell you this regression. Th- no, this schedule is incredible. Yeah, this is the Delicious best schedule. schedule. This is and the I, best right, so schedule let's talk about out it. there. And I, you to open it. I get, you know, ten I and a half point favorite. I don't want to just. And you keeps a good program. Uh, no, I though, will right? take the points. No, oh, I will certainly will. take no. the points. And I, you beat Georgia Tech at Georgia Tech two two years ago to open the season. Then they have Holy Cross, the Crusaders, which you definitely need to take oh, the points. That you know, there's going to be some secret society <laughs> meetings. Before Matthew this Saluka one. is a fucking beast. They need to 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 not overlook that game because they will lose that game if they do. But then uh, they have Florida State coming to town, which I wish this was at the end of the season, not the start of the season. True, but it's also right before they play Clemson, so it is Ooh. a a good look ahead. Florida spot. State look ahead. Yeah, Th- third starting off with three home games, two which will be wins. It's a good good place for. Yeah, uh, no, I'm, the fl- I'm sure Florida State being good, there'll be a lot of Florida State fans up there. I I, I went to an away, a tech away game up there. It was. More than half Hokie fans, and the Hokies were good at the time. But at Louisville, Virginia, at Army, West, beautiful West Point, mm, right on the Hudson, right on um, the Hudson. No, so I think well, well, which games were they winning? Well, here's UVA, what you gotta love about the schedule: three wins. I got them at four. Wh- but, which uh, is the fourth win Army. before the bye? Yeah. You're okay. picking. You're picking against our great Army out of the shotgun, of course. Oh, oh wow. yeah, that's right. <laughs> Colby's. I mean the. <laughs> Colby, I love the idea me? of the military being under the like under center. I mean, Colby's really close. Colby's about to raise the hammer and sickle for the uh, Russian Ruskies because of army. They still run the triple option. They still run the triple option. Oh, Wagner Group. They still a ground and pound operation. I don't know if you guys know this, but Roger Stahlbeck is not out there going to the service academies anymore. Oh. Um, four. I could see him going four and two these first six. Yeah, games. I, I've actually heard that uh, North Korea has outlawed the forward pass. So. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Might be into them, those guys. Uh, all right, so they they win. Kim Jong Un, not a bad guy. Four, <laughs> yeah, not as bad as that as that asshole Dan Snyder. Uh, four, th- so three wins, four wins. I four. think you can say four. I actually think, and and like I said, it, it you'd rather have Florida State in November, but at least you get them right before Clemson. And another thing is, like I'm favoring Louisville. I'm high on Louisville this year, but it is a brand new coach first month. Wow, best time to get them. I am an army guy still, but I'll agree with you guys. All right, coming off the bye at Georgia Tech, five. UConn, Jesus, yep. UConn beat them last year. Don't sleep on Jim. UConn beat them last year, but it's in Chestnut Hill. Winnable. 
at Syracuse. Wow. Winnable. Another uh, easy. Virginia Tech. Winnable. At Pitt. Yes. Pitt will always have like one or two. Pitt lost to Georgia Tech last year. They always do this where they, they look like they're Fall about to run away the with the ACC and yeah. they lose to well, a shitty not, team. It's not wait, hold on. Just pull up my notes from college football. Uh never lay and, points and I with a, Narduzzi. I got a good nugget for Syracuse. Dino Babers has been horrible in November. So he's uh <laughs> six and twenty one in November. Dude, dude, uh, I mean well, we'll that's save in the it. dome, baby. Yeah. We'll save it when we get to Syracuse. But the JMA which, wireless dome? It's <laughs> I would probably lean Q's there, but I, it's not Have a you sure felt thing. the energy in that building. <laughs> and then they end up with last well game of the year. Special teams. Yeah, last game of the year, they're gonna Miami. Beat Miami. Miami Miami's not gonna want that that going to Boston on in why, late November. Why do it's they already a have a game time? Fucking wheel, Miami's man. like, please don't make it a night game. Yeah, I guarantee you. Uh, but honestly, this is the this is a uh, like this is an, um, schedule. For dude, this they team. could they don't get who's their quarterback? Uh, I told you, Emmett Moorhead. Uh, they don't get Clemson. It was a little snappy. They don't get NC State. They don't get North Carolina. They don't get Duke. All four teams that won a lot of games last year. Um, this is one of the best schedules. Like I'm not. I don't think they're talented enough to to run the table. But if they were to just score an upset against Florida State and Louisville, or like you could end up in the ACC championship. Now, how do they determine the ACC championship? Is it just top, top two, teams. two teams? Yeah, that's but but look. Florida State plays Clemson. Mm-hmm. They don't. So my point is, if like it, it's very possible Missing that the Clemson. second best yeah. team, it, or the, the team that plays for the ACC championship, but other than Clemson, could be you know uh, one of the teams okay. that does not play you know uh, Florida State or Clemson. So Which, they would need to get a couple more wins. But oh, yeah. I don't think this is like a roster that's like ready for the ACC championship. I'm just saying. If they, if, they, one. if they surprised a little bit, if they were just a little bit better than we expected, they could beat all those shitty teams we just mentioned. This conference sucks. Uh, <laughs> over, over. Yeah. Right. You know what else? Over. I'm uh, locked in on underdog fantasy. Love drafting over on underdog fantasy. One, get a chance at fifteen million dollars in prizes. Are you kidding me? Best ball is the best way to play fantasy football. Get you ready for the NFL season. Don't waste your time with a meaningless mock draft. Put a couple bucks in underdog fantasy. Compete for real cash prizes. And uh, also, they got NFL season season long player props over unders. So many ways to win over at underdogfantasy.com. Use that promo code SGPN. Get a 100% deposit match up to $100. Underdogfantasy.com, promo code SGPN. All right, now we're up to six and a half wins. First up, Wake Forest plus one thirty to the over, minus one fifty to the under. Wake is fifty to one to win the ACC, three hundred to one to win the national championship. This is a this might as well be a FCS program. Colby loves because this is a program that's been Dave kept Clawson? well. It's kept well. Dave Lock Clawson, it up. good program. Lock it up. Fifty nine and fifty three as a head coach, and that includes two three win seasons to start his career. So pretty pretty. Um, Pretty reliable here uh, as Who's the new quarterback? program. Mitch, Mitch Griffiths. Griffiths started a couple games last year because remember Hartman was out for the first month of the season. Hartman went to Notre Dame, right? Yeah, mm. uh, a lot of returning players on offense, that's and a, you, we've talked turnover that's regression. A lock. Uh, they forced twenty nine turnovers in twenty twenty one. Had a bad year turnover wise last year, only sixteen. Feels like a bounce back oh. spot for them forcing turnovers, including uh, Jasheen Davis, defensive end, seven sacks last year, primed for a leap up for the Demon Deeks. Yeah, I mean Justin Ellison's back. They still have uh, they still have Donovan Green at the wideout spot. What is what does Clawson call the? Uh, he calls it the incubator. That's where he sends all of his players. This is he he lets them transfer out, like trying to get them paid. Yeah. He uh, it's like Kenneth Smart. Walker. He he's the one who built Kenneth Walker, and then he did one year in East Lansing, and everyone thinks he's a Michigan State guy. Uh, it, it's a smart way to get people to come through and trust you. If you're like, hey, yeah, no, I want you to. If moving on to another school is good for you, that's cool. But it's like you're getting guys in contract years. Like, hey, yeah. you want to get paid? Ball out. Well, the system works, yeah. and I, I would say, like, if you look around the ACC. It's but, like but uh, P- Pittsburgh's defense and Wake Forest offense, like they, those are the most consistent things over the last couple of years. And they have what they, uh, the whole roster only has five underclassmen that are starting, and some of those are red shirts. Everything so, I've, everything I've read suggests yeah. that they're not um, 
Yeah, I've seen a, a lot of optimism around the, the replacing a what seemed to be a very good quarterback in Sam Hartman. Who? Le, what? I one, don't think they're going to miss a beat. One private school yeah. to another. Kind of a tough schedule, though. All right, let, yeah, let's look at it. Uh, Not the easiest schedule, at least. Well, I mean, they they did. I mean, they remember they went to two overtimes with Clemson last year. Elon true. starting with FCS playoff team. Elon uh, has a reputation. If you're not from the the East, uh, as being like a, a school Phoenix. with a good ratio, the you know, Phoenix, a good ratio. Um, uh, v- Elon Vanderbilt at ODU and Georgia Tech to start up. out before yeah. your bye week, which I hate the early bye week, but but that it feels like a great way to like. Van, again, Vandy's the, the hard, hardest opponent. Little though. preseason action. You'll work some stuff out. I like this. Is a smart. I, you don't need this road game probably, but this is a, this is a nice start to the schedule. You then then it gets a little bit trickier. You have at Clemson. Oh, I didn't catch that back to back road spot uh, down to Vir- Lane that, Stadium. That plays into Virginia Tech's favor mm-hmm. a little bit. Maybe actually, maybe we need to maybe swap they that. We'll pick up a second. Right, let's uh, let's <laughs> we'll pull the Virginia Tech one up for review at the end of the episode. Uh, then you have Pitt at home, Florida State at home. Winnable. At, every time I see the three next to Florida State's name, I cannot it's insane. fucking believe. You know, like, my you eyes know, don't. You know, Clawson has has fucked up oh, Florida, Florida oh, State I the know. past like three or four I years. Just, I just, I'm not buying Florida State as a top program. At Duke, NC State, at Notre Ooh, Dame. This see, is a hard schedule though. At Syracuse. Well, look I, at like from the bye week. If you if you you almost have to start four and zero if you want this seven wins. So if you're if you're three and one, I see why the 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 juice is the way it is. But here's what I would say: if I'm going to pick apart these back to back, like a they they play they they played Clemson really well last year, but uh, this is at Clemson. Sure, they that Virginia Tech. I by then who knows what the environment's like because they could fucking suck. I, and I also think. At Notre Dame, I mean that was your quarterback for a number of years. You got a good edge. Look, I like it, but but the the back at Notre Dame at Syracuse at Notre Dame in late November, and then at Syracuse in general is a tough spot. So that's kind of tough. And then you have that other back to back. Again, I think if they get to four and zero, which I'd like them to do, I still think they can find three wins at post by. I just think it's Uh, it might be a little closer. I, I, I will remove the lock. I'll say seven and five. Seven and five, because that schedule is brutal. I mean, I, I do like Wake though. I think after the bye, short even where you get Virginia Tech is like the worst possible spot to get Virginia Tech. All right, but I'll flip it around on you. Yeah, they come out off a bye, very fucking prepared for Clemson, and they knock Clemson off. I just feel like that changes so here's, everything. Here's the problem: then, cha- they never beat Clemson. I mean, ever. Like the problem is, is they do that slow mesh offense. Which it works against everybody unless you have an under an That's unbelievable true. defensive, defensive line. line. And guess what, Clemson. I'm has. just saying if yeah. they if they come out and they take care of it, like look that 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 changes the momentum. And who knows, maybe this is a dark horse to to win the conference at fifty to one. I still think they're capable. Like I I'm like Pitt. They get to the championship game. You hedge out. They could if, beat if Pitt. They that. could beat Florida State, but. It, you got to admit, like having all of those in a row is fucking brutal. Like they, I, you would love to have ODU sprinkled in there or Georgia Tech sprinkled in there. Well, well good thing they have that early buy, I guess. We, would prefer to have it in the middle of that gauntlet. All right, next up, Duke six and a half. Also, same price, plus one thirty over, minus one fifty under. Uh, and big difference in the conference odds, though. Thirty seven to one. Must be some rich Dukies laying some action down. Uh, maybe it's the Illuminati. 180 to 1. Somehow Duke is listed for the college football playoff. None of these other teams have been. 250 to 1 to win it all, which by the way, that that line that does not line up to make the playoff at plus uh, at 180 to 1. So if you like Duke to win the national championship and you're you're a homer and you just want to get down in your alma mater, take make the playoff at 180. Yeah. Jesus, yeah. sir. Because then you have to win two games uh, against like. I mean, you can put mechanical parlay that thing up to a thousand to one I, easy. Uh, Duke was sixteen points away from being undefeated yeah. a year ago. Uh, they had a night. They jumped the offense a plus ten points per game more in twenty twenty two than twenty twenty one, and they re- um, uh, returned ten offensive starters. Out yeah, of eleven. So eight on defense. Uh, felt like they were really ahead of schedule. Riley Leonard with kind of a breakout year. Mike Elko coming in, helping improve in the defense. I, I like Duke. They look great on paper here coming in this next season. I guess you're just worried about teams like Duke, who last year was like they're they're one year ahead of schedule. They're surprising people, and it, and then 
this year with expectations, maybe maybe where you fumble well, a little the, bit. The schedule was brutal for them this yeah. year too. Sean, we have to note this great way to make make a, a a turd seem a little a little nicer. Sixteen points away from going undefeated, they lost four times. Did you, that that was yeah. a genius way to cover mm. it up. Four losses, but said sixteen points away yeah. from going undefeated. Well, they should have beat North that Carolina. Is, that is just yeah. that no, is to beautiful. Your, to your point, like they, you could make a case they should have had a better record last year. So. Even if they regress a little bit or don't have that same mojo they had last year, them getting to the seven wins, we'll walk through the schedule. They're, they're an interesting team here, especially in a wide open ACC. Open the season mind. with Clemson coming to town Labor on that Day. Monday night game, Labor Day. Look, if you told me you had to play Clemson this year, this that's the best spot to get them. They're breaking in a brand new offensive coordinator and a quarterback that only has two career touchdowns. I think that's the best possible spot to get them. You still got to take Clemson, but. Elko's a, a very good defensive coach. Maybe he can. Maybe he can really give. Uh, you know, give Club Nick. It's only uh, twelve. Yeah. Only I'll twelve. I'll take the points. I'll take the points there. <laughs> La- Lafayette, Lafayette uh, coming to town, which that's easy money right yeah, there. That's, yeah, that's that fuck is them, dude. Northwestern yeah. coming to town. Ooh, that's a that's a rivalry game. They've, got had, some... they've had Northwestern's number lately, though. Then you got at UConn. That's a that's a sneaky spot. game. That's a and then you got Notre game. Dame. Wow, a bunch of elitists all in a row. This is a this is a real elite schedule here. Three and two, four and one. What what are you leaning why, here? Why Kobe? can't they? Uh, they could run the three table. and two, but uh, it might not be the ones you think. I think they're capable of beating Notre Dame. They're also capable of losing to UConn. Yeah. Well, do why is Notre Dame thirteenth in the country? Because they're Notre Dame. They get this treatment every but year. But like, well, yeah. are they even good? Do they even have a head coach that knows how to coach? They did lose the Marshall and uh, Stanford <laughs> last year. I, like, what are we doing? They can win three games here. No, I would not be shocked if they're three and two. Coming off the bye, NC State at Florida State at Louisville. That's a tough banger. Mm. Wake mm. Forest, dang, and then another back to back at UNC at UVA, mm. and then Pitt. So four mm. road games in five weeks. With and, the Thursday and, night game smashed in the middle there. Look, they don't get Georgia Tech. They don't get Boston College. They don't get Virginia Tech. Not yeah, a lot yeah, of teams from they, the bottom. They get half. like the best part of the ACC. That's why I, I think it's almost this team's probably gonna be an actual better football team, but they won't be as good record wise because the schedule's that much harder. And they, they they get two power fives in the non con with Northwestern and Notre Dame. I I think you can you can I mean yeah at Florida State at Louisville the home games are winnable the Virginia Road game is winnable I I don't I'll take I I will take the over but barely and I, I don't feel great well, I think seven and five and six and six is where this so team's I, gonna reside. I said they could be three when they could be three and two going into the bye yeah. I felt can you opt- find four wins yeah that felt that. optimistic and then the if they win three home games plus Virginia that's four but that I would that's about as as optimistic as I could get. So I, I think for that reason, I, I think Colby's right. The schedule is very tough. I think they they definitely shot their wad last year and were, I they overperformed. I like your angle trying to say the sixteen point angle, but I uh, I, I think that they do take a step back regression wise. I think I'm going over. There's still too much consistency. I and this is a belief in Elko as a coach. He is I like what I said, and they won me a lot of money. Like I, I can't remember all the bets I made on them on the money line as dogs, and they they showed up, man. I think you need them to beat UConn on the road. I think they can. It's gonna be a fun game. Let's, yeah, great game. God's yeah. eye will be watching. <laughs> Syracuse six and a half plus one oh five to the over minus one twenty five to the under seventy five to one to win the conference wow three hundred to one to win the national championship no playoff odds the Bayheims have shifted to football uh just kidding yeah I, Syracuse I mean Dino I, I said the Dino paper stat uh six and twenty one in November but all like last season was a great example started off five and zero. Oh. I'm all in, and then they just slowly fall apart the rest of the season. Sean feels, falling in love with Syracuse. Every yeah, year. They're just a fun team. They, I mean, what I really like is they brought in Rocky Long as their defensive coordinator. Legend. Legend. Hashtag our gal. Stop for as a coordinator. Chloe, what do you what do you make of that? See the Godfather uh, of the three three five. He is. Yeah, he is. They're running it everywhere these days in football. 
So and Rich J- Rod really made it famous, right? And, and, yeah, and Jason Beck uh, was the quarterback coach. He's basically running Robert and I's offense as Robert and I goes to NC State. It's the same. They they had been a tandem for a while. So, uh, I the offense is going to be the same exact as it was uh, previously. Uh, the Shredder Garrett Schrader is back at quarterback. Um, is that good or bad? Yeah, it's a, he had a pretty good. He's year. fun. He's fun to watch. He's a gamer. I like him. He tries to play quarterback the right way, and on, on you know gets lit up you occasionally. Might, you might you might hate him because of that, but uh, you gotta, I got Colby likes him because he's willing to get lit up. No, he just tries, and I I don't like the way we've turned the quarterback position to an effort where they don't try. <laughs> uh, so, um, but if he was any better, and he tried this hard, you might not like. Him. No, no, no. If he tries that hard. Doesn't matter. I'm in. You're in. Okay. All right. Um, did lose Sean Tucker, who was kind of the heart of the team. True. Uh, they do have Aranda Gadsden Jr. though, and he's 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 pretty damn good. Uh, I think he'll be in the NFL. And uh, yeah, I mean, the offense has question marks, of course. The defense has question marks, of course. Mm. But they're probably right around what they were last year. No, no questions about that. Well coached special teams, though. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, it, it's a, it's. A, there aren't as many weird trips in the ACC when it comes to the road trip. The, the basically the ones up north kind of are it. Boston College and Syracuse. Syracuse tends to be extra strange because that weird dome uh, gets it, loud. It, it gets loud. It gets electric. But I, so we'll get through the, through the schedule. But I would say they have the toughest stretch in all of the ACC in their schedule. Ooh, okay. What is their win total? Six and a half. Mm. Colgate. To open the season, win easy win. Preview them on the college. Western Michigan, yesterday. win win. Brand new At Purdue, coach. interesting road. You gotta love there. the fact that t- two out of the three first games are against brand new head coaches against Western Michigan and Purdue, and, and then, then and then the shotgun offense at Army and then yeah. Army. So you very easily could be four and zero here. I kind of think they could. I mean, I, at Purdue, I would favor Purdue, but not by much. Then you have where get Clemson. Wrong. Your homecoming's Clemson. What? Like, that's not. I how like you, that. Though. They have a good. That's not do, how you do, do it. Do you remember the past couple of times Clemson's came up? They've there? always struggled, and but I think they've got one outright they, a couple they, times. Yeah, they got them outright a couple years ago. I think when they had Trevor Lawrence, they got them outright. But the last time they played, they missed a field goal to win the game. Syracuse yeah. did. Yeah. So it's it's. Uh, then they have tricky. at North Carolina, at Florida State. They almost beat them in Clemson last year, didn't they? Yeah. 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 And I mean, that's, week. that's tough, right? Yeah. I think they're going to lose all three. I think we got to pencil those in as three losses. Probably. I'm going to say they squeeze one of those out oh. five and two, well, five and two. Wow. I got them at three and four. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Who do you have them losing? Purdue, to? Purdue, Clemson, North Carolina and, and Florida state. Mm. I'm with you. I, five think, and two. I think they can, you know, if, if they steal one, maybe they get to four uh, off the buy at Virginia tech. Boston College, or that, that's the Thursday night game at Lane Stadium. So they do have a buy before it, though. Yeah. Once again, Virginia Tech just great yeah. schedule. Lame, lame yeah. as fuck. Then they go Friday, Boston College at home. Uh, then they're playing a game in Yankee Stadium versus Pitt. Yep. Uh, they're honoring the first college football game, right? Isn't that what that one is? I think Which like that, that. If they were honoring the first college football game, they would play it in New Jersey, but. Uh, Sure, they're playing it in the Bronx, <laughs> not where the first game was played. <laughs> then they have at Virginia Tech, and then Wake Forest at home to close out the season. Now, I I kind of think they can get some, some on the wins backside. in here. I, yeah, I kind of think they can. Can they? Win? I actually think they could win a, any of those games. I, I I have a hard time seeing Syracuse winning on a baseball field. I get. I'll be honest. They don't look like a team. True. That, I would take struggled. Pitt. Tino Babers has it's, struggled in that's November. True. That's true. That's true. Pitt wins on a baseball field. Well, and Pitt also they play in cold weather, and this little I dome team's gonna have to go outdoors. This little finesse, little cha 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 bullshit <laughs> is gonna have to go outdoors. Um, I think they could lose four of these games. Four, four uh, on the second half. Yeah. No. No, I got them. That they're gonna lose to my hope. I mean, I guess I took Virginia Tech and Boston College, yeah. but man, I don't feel great about those. Oh, now you're. Uh-oh. Um. Oh, the Benedict thing's already no, I'm happening. On the under. I'll take the under. Mid episode. What, what, what's our what's our number at again? One hundred percent on the six under. And six and a half. I half. think they're six and six. Yeah, that's that would be under, Colby. Give me the over for the Syracuse. Really? Yeah, yeah. 
that Lexington Steel conversation yesterday. I call, he just looks around the landscape of the sports uh, gambling media and he sees all these people with Syracuse degrees. So he's just trying to nestle yep. up next to them. Yep. A lot of, a <laughs> lot of, yes, Jimmy. Yeah. Hey. Yeah, a little hobnob with some yeah, Syracuse ter- folks. Tariko. Hey guys, we all like the orange, right? You, yeah, but you got pink eye like Bob Costas, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I got <laughs> over it though. All right, time for our locks and our future. Of course, make sure to subscribe to the Sports Gambling Podcast. Follow us on Twitter at Gambling Podcast. Uh, check us out YouTube every night, Sunday to Thursday, eight thirty Pacific. New episode will be live there, up on the feed. Kramer, what do you got? Over Wake Lock, under UVA Lock, future. You went so fast, but <sighs> well, I mean, I I am shocked you didn't put the UVA one in to start, and I'd say my f- the future I like here. We we really are talking about teams with very little opportunity. I think Wake to win the conference. Oh yeah, at fifty to one. Uh, if nothing else, there'll be opportunities to uh, create positive EV. I don't want to say hedge. Wake over six and a half. I'm with you on the lock. Uh, also, Virginia Tech under five. Oh, what are you doing? Under five and a half. And then uh, I'll go actually, since you already took Wake, I'll go Syracuse, 75 to one. A couple things break right. They get that Clemson game. Look out. Look out, Colby. I mean, to your, to your point, yeah, they, you know, obviously tough schedule, but imagine if they beat Clemson and Florida State. They're in there. True, true. If they win all those games, they will be in there. It's uh, true. Look. That's how it works. <laughs> Seventy-five to one. They could go twelve and zero. They could go zero and twelve. Uh, Anything I in between. See, I can see a lot of scenarios. <laughs> three and nine. <laughs> nine uh, and three. Both possible. I will take uh, the over on Boston College at ooh, five and a half. Ooh, ooh. Uh, and I will take. He doesn't seem certain on that. We're gonna have to listen. What did I'll you take, take the, on the? Uh, I'll take the under on Virginia Tech for five and a half. <laughs> did you? What did you take on the Boston College team preview? Over. Okay. Because because look, I told you <laughs> for now. If we're taking conference odds, yeah, I'm taking Boston College. 120 to <laughs> they one. They have the easiest schedule out of all of them. 120 yeah. to one. Whoa. Yeah. All right. Set, get, give a clip. Let's see, get something clip worthy. Look at, yeah, look at the camera. The camera look at the camera. The Boston College. Golden Eagles, even though they're just the Eagles, will be golden this year because you're going to have gold in your bank account when they go to the ACC championship and upset the Louisville Cardinals. Whoa, Jesus. This, <laughs> that, that got very hot. I mean, we, we're overheating. The whoa, podcast. whoa. I mean, now, please let. Please God, let Boston College come near this. <laughs> like, let us put this out at the end of October. Even that would be great if they were leading in like October thirtieth. Throw that. It's gonna be it. hilarious when they lose the Holy Cross it, week too. Colby, it's gonna, it's gonna be like that uh, Matt Corral Heisman ticket. But this time, let's get rid of. Let's get. Let's yeah, make we sure we get this thing off. off yeah. Send it off as soon as possible. All right, that'll do it for the podcast. Of course, turn on the auto downloads. Join the auto download army. Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. For the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean, second Money Green, and he is Ryan. No, we really need to talk to Bud about how I'm going to fall in love with the Hokies again. Kramer, let it ride.